Hello and welcome to section 7.1. So, so far in the class we've talked about differential equations, we've talked about uh, matrices and systems of linear equations. Now we're going to talk about differential equations and systems of differential equations. And they arise in some uh, real world examples such as mixture problems or electrical circuits or things like that. And to illustrate a point, I want you to first find the derivative of y equals e to the cosine of the quantity 3x squared minus 1. I want you to pay attention to the steps that you take, and then we'll pause back here in just a second to see what you did. So hopefully you remember your chain rule for derivatives. You have a function inside of a function inside of a function. And so if we use the chain rule, we can write y equals e to the u, where u is equal to the cosine of 3x squared minus 1. But we notice that we still have a function inside of a function, so we can write v equals 3x squared minus 1. And then we can break it down into its individual pieces. Uh, dy du is e to the u. And if we use this substitution, u equals cosine of v, so du dv is negative sine of v. And if v equals 3x squared minus 1, dv dx is 6x. And the chain rule told us that the derivative dy dx is going to be dy du times du dv times dv dx. And we just substitute the corresponding things in here. We could bring the negative 6x out front if we wanted to, but in essence, we've got the derivative here. And so this is one of the favorite techniques of mathematicians is to take a hard problem and break it down into smaller, easier pieces. And we're going to apply that to our differential equations here in just a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to take hard differential equations and we're going to break them down into easier and sometimes using a system of differential equations that we could then do uh, first order and use our first order techniques to solve. Okay. So let's do an example. So let's say that we have 4x double prime minus 5x prime plus 1 equals e to the t. We've seen some like this, and this one is a non-homogeneous second order with constant coefficients. So we could actually solve him using techniques we've learned previously in the class. But let's go ahead and just show how we could convert him into a different form. So let's let x1 be x, and then if we let x1 be x, and if I do the derivative of that, that would be x1 prime would be x prime. I'm actually going to call that the next intermediate variable x2. And since this is going to involve x double prime, if I take a look at this guy and do the derivative with respect to time, since that would be the independent variable t, x double prime would be x2 prime. Therefore, if we um, take and convert this into our system of first order equations, we could see that x1 prime is equal to x2. And if we solve for x double prime here, we would add the 5x prime, subtract 1 to the other side, and then divide by 4, getting x double prime equals 1 fourth times 5x prime minus 1 plus e to the t. And remember that x prime was worth, well, technically x1 prime, but if we want to keep this the way we are going with first order, let's substitute this in as x2 here. And the x double prime we'll call x2 prime. And if you substitute those guys in here, you'll see that we converted our second order equation into a system of two first order equations, which can often be easier to solve. Okay. Now it's your turn to try one. Take this third order differential equation and convert it into a system of three first order equations. And we'll give you a hint, x1 is equal to x. So we'll pause there while you do some work. And we'll pick up here in just a second. Okay. Did you get x1 prime equals x2? 
x2 prime equals x3 and x3 prime equals 2x3 minus x2 plus 1 plus x e to the x? I hope so. And you can kind of see how we use those intermediate variables and then solve for our highest order as a first order equation, just moving everything to the other side. So sometimes we run into situations where we've got two variables running around. So predator prey, kind of like we saw back in chapter six or population migration, other things like that. So we want to turn this second order system into a system of first order equations. Notice that they're second order because we've got second derivatives here. And so we're gonna end up solving for those guys. So let's go ahead and say that x1 equals x. And let's let x2 equal x1 prime, which would be x prime. Therefore, x2 prime would be x double prime. And if we take and solve this guy for x double prime, we find out that x double prime equals negative 3x plus y when I multiply both sides by 1 half. In a similar fashion, we'll find out that y1 equals y, y2 equals y1 prime, and y2 prime equals y double prime. And then we'll go ahead and um, use these equations right here to help set up our system. So here's one of them, here's another one. And then since this is only second order, we can solve for the second derivative as a first order differential equation in terms of other stuff. So let's do that. So we've got x1 prime equals x2, and x double prime being x2 prime is equal to negative six x, and x was x1, plus two y, which would be plus two, y1, okay? Let's take care of the y's. We also need y1 prime equals y2, and y double prime was already solved for explicitly here, so y2 prime is equal to 2x. x was worth x1 variable minus 2y, y is worth y1 variable, plus 40, sine of 3t. Now we've converted our second order system into a system of first order equations. Now that we've seen how to convert a system of differential equations into first order, or even a differential equation itself into a system of first order equations, sometimes um, it's actually easier to, um, if we have constant coefficients, we can sometimes find its solution easier if we go back actually to the um, higher order equation. So let's show how we can convert back and then solve using techniques that we have seen before. So if we have the system x prime equals y and y prime equals 2x plus y, let's try to solve this and find the general solution. Okay. And I've given you a hint, let's take the derivative of the first equation. If we take the derivative with, of the first equation, we'll get x double prime equals y prime. And knowing that y prime is equal to 2x plus y, we then, and that y is equal to x prime, we can then say that x double prime equals 2x plus x prime. Or in other words, x double prime minus x prime uh, minus 2x equals zero. And this is something we've seen before, a second order constant coefficient homogeneous differential equation. So we think that x is gonna be something of the form e to the rt, or some scalar multiple of that. And if we do that, we get the characteristic equation r squared minus r minus two equals zero. And that will factor as r minus two and r plus one. So our r values are two and negative one respectively. Therefore, our solution is x of t is equal to some constant multiple of 
e to the 2t plus a constant multiple of e to the negative t. And so that's part of it. That's actually the x part. And we know that y is x prime. So let's find out what x prime would be. x prime of t would be equal to 2c1 e to the 2t minus c2 e to the negative t. And since y prime, sorry, x prime is y, we then can solve and find our general solution in terms of both x's and y's based on the variable, independent variable t would be 2c1 e to the 2t minus c2 e to the negative t. And so here is our um, general solution to that system of differential equations. Now, as we've seen so many times before, sometimes we can um, solve for the c1 and the c2 by using initial conditions. So I'm gonna pause the video, but I'm gonna let you see if you can find out who the c1 and the c2 are based on the initial condition that x of zero is three and y of zero is four. So if I put a zero in for t, I find out that three is equal to c1 plus c2 and a zero in for t in the y equation is 2c1 minus c2 is equal to four. Solving that, we find out that c1 is 7 thirds and c2 is 2 thirds. Plugging those guys back in here, we get this specific solution, particular solution to our initial value problem. Now, what I want to do is have you pause again and verify that these guys actually satisfy our original differential equation and our initial conditions. Okay. Let's check our work together here. So I took my differential equation, the x of t, and did his derivative. Found out that that is in fact what y of t is worth. I did the derivative of y of t. I also found 2x plus y and found out that that works out to be this, which happens to be the same as the derivative y prime of t. And substituting zero in for the t values, verifies that I do in fact meet each of the initial conditions as well. So finally for this video, if we have a system of n first order linear differential equations, each with coefficients, in this case a function, but they don't have to be functions, they could be constants, um, and we have a non-homogeneous function for each one of these guys, and they're continuous on some open interval i about point a, then there exists at least one solution to the system and um, there exists a unique solution for um, if we have enough initial conditions. And this guy actually here is a particular case of this one here. If we let x be the, sorry, x1 be the x variable and x2 be the y variable, you'll see that um, if I let p11 be zero and x2 is the y and I let this be a one, then I've got x, prime equals zero x plus y. And you can see how I'm just setting up this guy right here. And similarly, y prime is equal to, if this guy's the constant number two, x plus y. Okay. So just showing how this guy right here fits here. In this case, we had uh, homogeneous pieces here we didn't have any um, non-homogeneous parts. So hopefully that's made sense and the homework will work out for you. See you in the next video.